So, the claim that I'm responding to is that marijuana smoking is less harmful to oneself than smoking tobacco or cigarettes. And the secondary claims were cigarettes can cause lung damage and contribute to nearly one death every year in America, while marijuana is not as addicting and not as harmful. And also, marijuana users are not as likely to get addicted, and that marijuana can help treat disease like glaucoma. So I'm just going to go over claims and point out some of the problems in that. It's because it's not that the facts are wrong, it's just that there's just other stuff that to take into consideration. So, first claim that marijuana smoking is less harmful than tobacco. It is true that marijuana isn't, is less harmful. In fact, according to one study, it says that only 9% of people will get addicted to marijuana as opposed to the 32% that get addicted to tobacco. However, when you smoke marijuana, marijuana still has the same type of chemicals that can cause damage to your lungs. And it, well, and even though it still takes so, it takes longer than cigarette smoking to get to get for the damage to happen. Eventually, it will still catch up. So that's still something to think about when you use it. Also, uh, when, according to the book marijuana, according to H. Wesley Clark of the direct who is the director of the Center of Substance Abuse Treatment at Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. Using marijuana while it doesn't affect the lungs as immediately, it can still affect the neuropsychological functioning of the brain, which includes like hand-eye coordination and memory. So even if it, the lungs aren't affected, that's still, there's still a possibility of the brain being affected, which is also just as important. It, the secondary claim about marijuana not being as addictive. So, well, marijuana, the other claim is that marijuana could also, it's not a gateway drug to help to other drugs. And while that is true that marijuana is not as likely to be as addicting, if you take it for a long time, according to the Foundation for a Drug Free World, over the, like overusing Marijuana does eventually build a tolerance in your body. Like it's not as easy to get high as it used to. So naturally, if that does happen, the only other solution would be try to find something else to cause you to feel the same way. Because that's the only other thing to do if you still want to feel the same way. The problem though is that it could also lead to more dangerous drugs. And so marijuana users, while not as likely to get addicted, there's still a risk. It's only 9% according to a study, but when you think about it, it's 9% of something dangerous could still be something worth thinking about. And third claim was that marijuana can be used to treat disease. And this one, the claim of fact speech that I used did mention that it could treat glaucoma. However, it didn't mention that when you use marijuana to glaucoma, there are still side effects, such as high, like the decrease in blood pressure and the increase in the heart rate. So even if it is helpful, like every like I said before, like there's still a risk carried there. So I think in that case, it's probably still worth people still thinking about it before they make it legalized for treatment because it's not that it isn't helpful, like it's already been proven that it can't help, but there's still the risk of getting addicted and the risk of the damage that it can cause. And that's usually the only problem that's stopping people from really considering it. And so so basically what I believe is that while marijuana can be helpful, the, the harmful effects that it take can still cause risks.
All right, structurally everything is easy to follow. Uh, you, you go to the first point and uh, you, you basically accept the premise of that point. Uh, and actually, I think you provided evidence on this that might have even been better than the advocate's point on uh, the addictiveness of marijuana. Uh, ultimately, though, you come down arguing, look, that marijuana use will eventually kept, uh, you know, catch up with the uh, user. And so in the long run, you're going to get these harms. But I didn't hear any evidence that suggested that. Uh, that seems like to be a big, pre a big presupposition. The one piece of evidence that we did get on that first point was really about the uh, um, neuropsychological effects that it could have, and I thought that that was a pretty good response there. Uh, there needed to be a little bit explana more explanation about why that was risky and what the consequences would be. Uh, the, uh, you know, the argument that it's more dangerous or less dangerous, I think the first question that you ought to be asking is why is this comparison being made? Um, because the question of whether or not it's more or less dangerous dangerous is only relevant if there's going to be a value claim or a policy claim that follows up because uh, both of them have uh, drawbacks. You know, it's, it's like saying, well, which is more dangerous, jumping out of a plane uh, with a parachute or, um, you know, bungee jumping? You know, they're both kind of dangerous. Both of them probably you're going to be okay, but there are risks that are involved. But why are we making that comparison? We're making that comparison for the purpose of making some other inference later on, what would be best for us to do, for instance. And I think that uh, you might want to come back to that argument a little bit and suggest that uh, the premise of, that these arguments are supporting ultimately is suggesting that um, marijuana be treated no differently than uh, tobacco and that there would be potential consequences on that. On the second point, on the gateway drug issue, I think you've got an interesting explanation and theory there. It would be nice if there was some information that supported it, that because people develop a tolerance, they seek additional drug use uh, that might increase uh, their susceptibility to something dangerous. That's a, that's a good theory, but I, like I said, I didn't see much evidence on that particular point. On the third point, you're basically conceding the issue of glaucoma as being treated by marijuana. I'm not sure that you want to accept that premise. I think there is a lot of controversy about how effective uh, marijuana is. I did think that the counterclaim about potential side effects was a good idea, uh, but I didn't really hear any source citation on that, and there ought to be some explanation about why high blood pressure or an increased heart rate is dangerous, especially for glaucoma patients. All right, thank you.